Good morning, everyone. Today we read the book of Revelation, chapter three. It's a letter to the churches. There are three churches: the church in Sardis, the church in Philadelphia, and the church in Laodicea. And、uh, so the section is divided into first one to six, first seven to thirteen, and then fourteen to twenty-two. So according to the letters to the three churches, and these three churches received the messages from Jesus just like、uh, before. Actually, these issues in the three churches are found also in other churches that we may also have their shadows in us. And、uh, looking from chapter one to. Chapter three. We know that Jesus has His will for the churches. Jesus is walking in the midst of the golden lampstand, and He's holding seven stars in His hand. So He has a will for His church. He's the Lord of the churches. And today, why shall we look at the Book of Revelation? And it has a very special place. In the whole Bible, because it helps us understand God's will for the churches. If we don't know these messages, we will not know if the churches we build up is according to the will of Jesus. So the Book of Revelation is a great reminder for us. Let's look at the first section. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, write. These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember therefore how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So, Jesus did not. Praise the church in Sardis. The church in Sardis was the only church without receiving any praise from Jesus, and that's very pitiful. And Jesus only rebuked them. And can you imagine if one day we see Jesus and He doesn't praise us, but only rebuke us? That is terrible. And the name Sardis means red. This city is called Sardis. It means red. And the church in this place is、uh, has a red light. It's a dangerous church. Why? Let's share the. Let me share the background for this city. The city was wealthy in、uh, transportation crossroad, and it was designed to be very strong. With upper city and lower city, and the upper city was built on a mountain. It's hard to attack, but it's easy to defend, and that was the pride of the people in Sardis. They thought it would be hard for the enemies to attack them. The enemies would have to go up the mountain to attack them. But、uh, people had a problem. They had a customs and a culture. They were quite lazy. And with a very strong city, it would be difficult to be attacked. But it was destroyed twice, one time by the Persians. Why? And actually, it was out of injustice. The city was very strong, but the people guarding the city fell asleep, and so the enemies attacked them. Uh, by surprise. So, if the watchmen would stay awake, then there would not be a 
attacked, but unfortunately, twice they just thought that the city would be so strong, so they were lazy. The watchmen were lazy, and so they were defeated. So today we should also ask ourselves: in our spiritual life, are we also lazy? And that was the issue of Sardis, the church in Sardis. And so Jesus said, "These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars." You know, Jesus has a special introduction for himself, according to the issues of the church. What does it mean? He who has the seven spirits of God. You know, the spirit of God never slumbers or sleeps. It's also always alert, stays awakened, and so Jesus is never lazy. He has the seven stars, which means God is always watching the churches. The Holy Spirit has never departed from the churches, and so that's a contrast, a sharp contrast to. To the people in Sardis, you know, when Jesus was on earth doing his mission, he was very alert and he would do everything according to what Father God wanted. But the people in Sardis was completely different and opposite to Jesus. They always were too relaxed, and you know, just like a. Christians nowadays, many of us are very complacent. You know, just like our children, some of them are so relaxed, and、uh, yeah, that's cute. But as they grow up, they cannot stay in that attitude, and that's why Pastor Zoe said she appreciates the school of.、Uh, Leora, that、uh, straining her to persevere, to move around. So for us, it's the same. We should always advance in our life. But if we like to stay in a complacent life, and you're the same as ten years ago when you first became believers, then that's not okay. You know, the church has been established, and the believers have believed in Jesus from. So long, but their lives are not changed, and still having a complacent lifestyle. And so, this church is just too relaxed, too late, lazy. And in the beginning, when six women first started,、uh, it was very revived, and some people said. How come、uh, you have to work so hard, so much, and just like some people going to three one six one one, they will have to line up to go inside to attend the service, and others would ask, why do you have to make all the trouble to line up to go to a church? Just go to any church is okay, you know. That's a complacent,、uh, lazy attitude. If I were part of the church in Sardis and I received a letter from Jesus, and he said, "You're alive, but you're dead. You have a name that you're alive, but you're dead." So that's actually a very harsh word, a heavy word. In Jesus' eyes, the church was dead. So how can you continue on? I think、uh, the people in Sardis. Did not think that they were so worthless in Jesus' eyes like that, and so Jesus said,、uh, "The way out is to be watchful. The antidote is to be watchful. The city was attacked twice because they were not watch watchful. So Jesus reminded them, 'Be watchful and.'"、Uh, Be ready, guard yourself, and awake. And wake up. Don't be lazy. Today, are we very complacent and lazy? 
、uh, without any motivation. You know, in the life of faith, we cannot walk in a very complacent, relaxed way. Otherwise, we'll will be lost in the world. And so Jesus said, "You have the name of a Christian, but you don't have the true life." So you are like dead. Your spiritual life is dead. Only superficially, you are Christian. You do not follow God wholeheartedly. We cannot really follow Jesus、uh, in a very slow, relaxed way, a complacent way. You see, Jesus is leading new crop in a very fast speed. You know, we always have a feeling in six one one. You may have left for a.、Uh, Week or two, and then you come back, and you realize there's so many things you need to catch up with, and just like、uh, now we're building the temple, every day is the site is different. You know, if you were not in Hong Kong the week we received the six point one one million offering. You will be surprised. Oh, what has happened? So we cannot stay too relaxed. Otherwise, we cannot follow God.、Uh, otherwise, we have a name, a life, but we are dead, and that's very pitiful and miserable. So Jesus said, "Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die." And that is very miserable. Even those remain are ready to die. So the whole church is dead or are ready to die. So what's the hope? In God's eyes, it's not like this. The problem was that、uh, I have not found your works perfect before God. To Jesus, nothing is perfect. And they have failed in every way, and so Jesus said, "Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. So, as you receive the gospel and the word of God." You must hold on to it and repent, and do not neglect it. It's actually easy for us to be like this. We have become a believer. We put Jesus into our heart, but then we just live our own old life. As in the past, we do the same thing, like the past before we became a believer. And has the word impacted us? Has the gospel changed our life attitude? And the greatest issue in the church in, of of the church in Sardis was that the people's lives did not change or adjust according to the truth. They didn't follow the truth. They just heard the truth and put it in the mind, but the knowledge did not enter into their hearts. And for example, like we we actually may experience the same. God says.、Uh, Love others as yourself, but after listening, we don't change. And God said, "Do not be a clan of Cain. Do not be angry or hate to others, but choose to love." Maybe we just listen to the sermon and then we just go to others and have hatred in our hearts. If that's the case. Then we have no difference from the church in Sardis. By name, we are alive, but we are actually dead. We have a lot of knowledge in our heart, in our mind, but we do not live it out. And so, by name, we are alive. Why? Because we have a lot of、uh, truth and knowledge in our head. It's like you have the skills, you know the truth, but you just don't move. Can you imagine when you have an exam, you have enough knowledge in your head, but you don't write it down with your hand? Then how much mark would you receive? So you know how to do it, but you don't do it. And the church in Sardis was like that. 
and they received revelation of the truth, but they did not obey. They did not keep the word of God. Otherwise, we we live. We are alive by name, but actually, we are dead. And if we do not repent, because the time there's not much time left, Jesus said, "I will come upon you as a thief." Uh, for the people in Sardis, they will be terrified because twice when the city was attacked, they experienced like a thief coming at the time and in a in a place they would not expect the enemy to come because the watchmen were lazy. They thought no one would climb up from the cliff, the steep cliff. So, in a place that you least expected, the enemy came like a thief, and the whole strong city was defeated. So Jesus said, "Stay alert, be watchful. Otherwise, Jesus will come like a thief. You do not know what hour he will come upon you." And、uh, for those lazy ones, they may think that Jesus said,、uh, "I'll come back for over twenty, two thousand years." So, will he really come back so soon? This is not being watchful. You always think that there's a, a opportunity, a chance. You know, the lazy people like to procrastinate. You know, my simo always needs to help me to not. To procrastinate, I'm hardworking in many ways, but there are a few ways that I like to procrastinate. So I need the help of my wife. You know, those lazy people that like to procrastinate and say, "Okay, fine, soon, later." Just like in the mother church for Pastor Joshua, when you ask him, "Should we go play basketball?" and he would say, "Sure, yeah, let's do it now." But sometimes when we ask him to do something he doesn't like, he will delay it, and we are the same. Jesus reminds us: don't be lazy, don't procrastinate with spiritual things, because we do not know when Jesus will come back. He's coming back soon, and when he comes back, we need to be accountable. He won't come and just pat on our head and say, "Oh, you're a Christian, okay, you're my sheep, okay, good, good, good." No, these seven letters were given to the seven churches. Jesus loves the church so much; he died for us. But then. Does that mean he has no demands for us? All is true love, without any demand, and just let us do whatever. No, we love our children. So what do we do? We teach them. And of course, we need to have wisdom how to teach the children. That's another topic. But we need to know true love. Will requires teaching to help them improve and correct them. We do not spoil our children, and it's the same for the church. The Lord has demands for us. If they do not、um, overcome, if they didn't repent, Jesus would come like a thief. But there was still a good point, and there were a few ones in Sardis who had not defiled their garments. They walked with Jesus, and so you see, Jesus looked at the church and everyone there, and he knows who truly follows him. And so, those who follow Jesus, who overcomes, shall be clothed in white garments, and Jesus will not blot out his name from the book of life. You see, if we are not lazy, we follow Jesus, and we can walk with Him. You know, it's terrifying that our name can be blotted out from the book of life. Don't think that、uh, we will forever be saved if we have received Jesus once in our heart. We pray the sinner prayer. There is a chance that. People's names will be blotted out from the book of life. 
if you say you follow Jesus but you don't, if you say you believe in Jesus but you don't really follow Jesus, that is not a true faith. If you just be a Christian by name, your name may be blotted out from the book of life. So that's a shocking message to the church in Sardis, and actually in every city in the Roman Empire back then. If you, your name was written in the book of the Romans, and you can stay there. But if one day they find out that your name is not in the city, then the people would cast out those people, thinking that you may be a spy. So in critical moments, when the book, ah,、uh, the book would be opened, the book of the city would be opened, and、uh, whether your name is there would be very important. So. We also there's also a book of life in heaven, and one day if your name is not found there, then that is really troublesome. You know, people can、uh, live or go around the city, but when the enemies come, you will have to go back to the city for protection. But then, if people cannot find your name in the book of the city, Then you cannot enter. That would be very dangerous. So that was the situation of Sardis. So today we need to know that our names are also included in the Book of Life, in the eternal holy city. Otherwise, we cannot enter into it. So he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And now let's look at the second section. Verse seven. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things: as he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. And to know that I have loved you, because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the New Jerusalem, which comes down,、uh, down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So Philadelphia, this name means the brotherly love. This is supposed to be a city where the brothers love. One another, and Jesus' revelation to them was that this Lord is the Holy One who is true. He has the key of David. He who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. So, the name of this church, the name of Jesus that he revealed to the church, is that he is holy. You know, every church would reveal or manifest the image of Jesus. So for these people in Philadelphia, Jesus said, "I'm holy." You see, that is very special. You know, our love for one another should be holy, shouldn't cross boundaries. We should have a holy love and true, truthful, and it should not be fake. And he, Jesus is the one who has the key of David. He represents the key of heaven. Because David is a king after God's heart, and、uh, that Davidic dynasty was the most prosperous one, and、uh, he opens and no one shuts, and he shuts and no one opens. You know, the city of Philadelphia was called the Gate. To the east, and to go 
to the east, people must pass through Philadelphia. And then Jesus said, "He is the gate. He is the door to heaven. Apart from heaven, no. One, apart from Jesus, no one can go to heaven alone. So Jesus has the key of heaven. He opens and no one shuts, and he shuts and no one opens. He's the way to heaven. So when the people in Philadelphia read this, they will have a strong feeling, because they were called the Eastern Gate, the gate to the east, and Jesus is the gate to heaven. So what is more important, to the east or to heaven? And it's obvious. And Jesus said, "I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can sh- shut it. For you have a little strength." I've And so, in God's eyes, this church was good. It had a little strength, even though it was a small church, and also a small city. But that was okay. That ch- it doesn't matter about the size of the church, as long as it follows God. So, Jesus said, "You have kept my word and have not denied my name." And so He said, "See, I have set before you an open door. No one can shut it." So this church has good relationships with others, with each others, and the love for one another, one another was praised by Jesus. Jesus couldn't find much、uh, any weaknesses about this church, even though the church was small. But there was love, and this is very important. What's most important is we love and one another. As we read on, you will find that this is very important. And Jesus said, "Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you." So Jesus loves this church, and he wants. Those who call themselves Jews, but actually belonging to the synagogue of Satan, that Jesus loves this church, and so Jesus would protect this church and keep watch over this church. They face a outward attack. This false Jews they attack the church, but Jesus said, "Because I love you, I will make these people worship you before you." Uh, bow down before you, before your feet, and so that means they would bow down to God, and God would do this miracle for them. And because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. And this word. Is powerful. As I read it today, I was really moved. So this church is called the Church of Brotherly Love. They have a great blessing that when people face trial in the whole world, referring to the future and time when there will be a tribulation, a lot of Christians are worried that、uh, what if.、Uh, We have to pass through three and a half years of tribulation before we can be lifted up to heaven. And、uh, how can we stand it? But God gives a revelation to the church in Philadelphia. Even though there may be a great tribulation, as long as the brothers and sisters of one another, then God will keep us. We can be exempted from the trial. That. Tribulation will not shake us because we love one another, and the church is united. It's very important because God is love. Because God is love, and as we love one another, God is with us. And as we, you know, as we、uh, start a new crop, Simon and I are very thankful that.、Uh, The co-workers and the tribe leaders and cell leaders are very united, and that's the strength of new crop. As we have this true and holy love, even though there is, there may be trials, we don't need to be afraid because God will keep us. When 
the whole world is undergoing trials. God will keep us. So Jesus said, "Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown." So as long as they hold fast to their love for one another, then they can keep their crown. And he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the New Jerusalem. So the one who overcomes will receive the city of God, which is the kingdom of God. You know the city of. Philadelphia was destroyed by earthquakes, and so the people there had to leave the city and find an empty ground to avoid the earthquake disaster. So God said,、uh, in the future, in the heavenly city, there will be no more earthquake or disasters. You don't need to run away from the city anymore. And、your love for one another and for God will keep you from any tribulations because love can overcome, and that's a reminder for us today. Do we truly love our brothers and sisters? And、uh, finally, the last church, and then to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right? These things says. The Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you look warm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have in need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from my from me gold refined in a fire, that you may be. Be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eyes eyes safe, that you may see as many as I love, I will build and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So you know, we have been to Turkey to visit this. Church, the the ruins of this, the remains of this church in Odysseus. It had a so we saw that it was a very big church, and as we look at the ruins, the archaeological remains, we see that、uh, it was a very glorious and splendid church, and the people who in this church. Was must be influential in the city, so the church could be so big. So Jesus called himself the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. So you know the people in Laodiceans they pursued to they pursued democracy. It's not that democracy is bad. But if they become human-centered, that's not good. And this church was human-centered. As Jesus said, "I'm the man, the faithful and true witness." You know, human-centered means that、uh, they, no one could really rule over them. They were their own masters. As Jesus said, "He is the beginning of the creation of God." He's the king, and they didn't have much understanding about the king because they're quite remote. So, from the king, so the king is not so important to them.、But、Jesus said, "I know your works. He knows everything. That you are neither cold nor hot. I could, could wish you were cold or not. So, because you look warm." Neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. And the people in Nalesians、uh, could understand this. You know, in Turkey, people like to visit the area where they had this outdoor 
warm pools, like white in color. The tourists like to go there, and uh, upper stream. Uh, it's hot with medical effect, but in the lower stream, all the minerals were deposited. So, in the lower stream, the water is very pure and can be drunken. It's cool, but in the middle, it's lukewarm with a lot of deposits. So, you cannot just drink it. Too much minerals, you want to foam it, and、uh, the deposit is not enough to, and it's not hot enough to have the medical effect. So they will have the people in、uh, the Odysseans cannot drink their own streams; they must draw water from far away. So when Jesus said that you're lukewarm, I want to foam it you out of my mouth. So if we're lukewarm. If we have the spiritual gifts, but we don't use, we are neither cold nor hot. Then we are useless. We cannot contribute to the kingdom of God, and so Jesus cannot stand them. He wanted to forbid them, like they had no function. So if your children grow up at home and just stay there doing nothing, not contributing to anything. Then you'll be very upset. You're old enough. What are you doing? And so that was what、uh, Jesus said to the church of the Laodiceans. As I mentioned, the church there was very wealthy. And so, verse seventeen is Jesus said, "Because you say I'm rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you're rich, miserable, poor, blind, and naked." The church. Of the Laodiceans, they were wealthy. They must be dressing up really nicely. They lived in a very beautiful place, but in God's eyes, they were poor, and that was a sharp contrast to the church of、uh, Smyrna. Smyrna. They were, thought they were poor, but God said, "You are rich." And this is opposite here in the Church of the Neodysians. You are not just poor, but miserable, wretched, blind, and naked. So Jesus said, "I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich. The real wealth can last forever." And、uh, people in the Neodysians they pursued earthly wealth, but they did not pursue heavenly wealth, which can be. Kept forever, and then Jesus said,、uh, "I counsel you to buy from me white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed." Because they were too worldly, they were not holy, they did not have a heavenly wealth, so they were shamed and naked. And so Jesus said,、uh, "You also need to anoint your eyes with eye salve, because." Their spiritual eyes were not open to pursue worldly things, and it was、um, very sarcastic that、uh, actually now these ones were famous for the eye cream, the eye medicine. But Jesus asked them to buy eye salve from him that they may see. And Jesus says, "As many as I love, I will build and chasten." Therefore, be zealous and repent. And the promise is that, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him, and dine with him, and he with me. So the church is glorious and glamorous, but then they have not opened the door for Jesus. They did not put God first before people and then the land. They put the land first before men and God. They pursued worldly wealth and reputation. So there was like a wealthy club. There was they, they were not really a church, and so God knocked at the door. And if you open the door to Jesus, Jesus will come in to dine with you. And he said to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I have overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne. So he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So 
God said,、uh, "If you walk with me, I will give you the spiritual heavenly authority. You will sit on the throne with me, and that's what we should truly pursue. So everyone should hear what the Spirit is saying. And today, let's ask ourselves in our lives: Do we have these shadows? Do we put God first before people and then the land? Are we just relaxed and lazy? Do we see the red warning light? If that's the case, we must repent quickly because Jesus sees all this, and one day we need to be accountable to Jesus. He's coming back soon, so we need to stay awake, to repent, to live out the image. Of God, because Jesus walks in the midst of the churches. Amen. Lord, your mercy is with us today. We want to cry out for your mercy again in the whole world among your churches. Give us your mercy in all the believers. Let's praise the Lord now, brothers and sisters. If it wasn't because of God's mercy or love. Every one of us who have to face death because we are sinners. So let's praise our Lord first and cry out to Him that He will come to us in our land and our church, and let's cry out to His love to fill us and cry out for His salvation. Let's praise our Lord. He is the great and awesome God. He also knows us. He's a righteous God and He's merciful God. Also, we come to You, Lord, and we see our own limitations and sins. We cry out for Your mercy. Give us Your eyes safe, so we open our eyes, so we can see our filthiness and our inadequacies. We see all the weaknesses that You are not pleased with. Lord, help us and give us the strength to change ourselves. May you come and shine your light in us, Holy Spirit. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Today, Revelation chapter three, God spoke to three churches: the Church of Sardis and Philadelphia, and the Church of the Laodiceans. And every church, God knows them well. He said, "I know your works." And God is telling us today also. I know your works. I know your works. Don't think that God doesn't know. Cannot see. I'm just a small potato. God doesn't know. But God is telling us again clearly. I know your actions. I know your works. Whatever kind of Christian you are, God says, I know you. May we have a heart to fear God and examine our lives. God said, these three churches. Uh, also, the condition of the churches now. He was not talking to the non-believers or those who are still sinning, but he was talking to the believers who who were attending churches. And God said, "I know your works." So today, may we humble ourselves. It's not just we think that oh yeah, this and this is like that. Let's align ourselves with the Lord. We need to be accountable. To God, with our own life, and not be accountable for others' life. So, do I live out the life of a believer that the Lord is pleased with? The issue of the church in Sardis was that they were Christian by name, but they were not watchful. The animals, the enemies, always came to attack them. So. Are we also like that? We have some bad emotions and addictions. We are just like Christian by name, but we have not lived out the life of God. Do we really believe that our name is in the book of life, or are you not sure? Let's ask the Lord to take away the fakeness we have, and how, so that we can always have a alert, watchful spirit, which firmly trusts in the Lord. And the church in Philadelphia, they loved one another. Unfortunately, this love was fading. They didn't have a true unity in our lives. To, are we willing to love and bear with others, 
or oh, do we always criticize others and pinpoint the faults? Do we love our family with Jesus' love? Love our cell members, our leader, and our friends. If you know that you also lack something, that you recognize or admit that you're not doing well enough, let's tell the Lord and ask the Lord to give us a love for others and even love for our enemies. If we have a, a lot of jealousy, competition, and comparison inside us, ask the Lord to remove them and give us the unity and love. For the believers in the Laodiceans, God said, they just pursue the worldly wealth. They were lukewarm. They were just too relaxed and complacent. Are we also like that? Are we passionate for God? Are our, our eyes fixing on earthly things? So, as our Lord, as as our Lord to. Be on fire for him again, that our eyes can focus on the heavenly things, and let's pray for ourselves. Lord, we come before you again. We admit our weaknesses and inadequacies. May you cleanse us with your blood again, and so that we don't boast and think that we are good enough. Let us humble ourselves and confess that yeah, we are full. Of sins, may you give us your love again. Fill us with your love. Help us to trust you, and come and shake our lives, and help us to arise again, so we can live out the image that you are pleased with. When we think we cannot do that, may you strengthen us, lift us up, so we can stand again and run after you. May you help us. We fear you and pray for our lives. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Now let's stand up. Let's pray for all the churches in the world. It's like talking to the three churches back then, but actually, the Book of Revelation is also speaking to all the churches in this world. This chapter is also a revelation of the issues of the churches in the end time. As I read this this morning, I just feel that God's heart must be very sad. His people should be strong to bring the power and peace and joy of God and share the gospel powerfully. But as people cannot follow God closely, we need to repent and pursue the Lord. So let's pray for the whole. The churches in the whole world, and ask the Holy Spirit to work, to awaken all the believers and pastors, to have more fear of God. Let's pray, and ask God to give us the unity. And、uh, in the past, the churches were divided because of the social movement, and we only rebuke others. But now. God is saying that we need to love one another to have unity. So let's proclaim that God's seal will fill the church. Ask for God's mercy to come to the churches, and different people with different standpoints will stand together. Without God's word, we are hopeless. We cannot get out of it. Only God's truth can help us. So let's pray in tongues and ask the Lord to work in us spiritually, and to change people's. Hearts, Lord, the church needs you. Lord, we pray for the churches in the whole world. We don't want to be satisfied and thinking that oh, we have salvation already, and so we stay the same way. May you help us to be zealous to you, to respond to your love. And we pray for the churches. We see that a lot of churches are very weak, especially. There are a lot of pastors and brothers and sisters have emigrated, and it's like they're hopeless. But we really pray for the churches in Hong Kong. May you raise up more pastors to shepherd your flock, and give us unity again to live our God's will, your God's power. We cry out to you, 
May you reveal yourself and we pray for new crops. Thanks for one, we're building up your temple. May your will be done in us. Use new crop to be a lampstand to share your fragrance. May new crop be pleased with you and fulfill your end time will. Lord, we thank you. Hear our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. The Book of Revelation, Chapter Three. God is speaking to us through these three churches. May we become a church that's pleasing to God. To the church in Sardis, God is reminding us to be watchful. So, in Jesus Christ's name, I ask the Holy Spirit to help us to release the anointing of watchfulness to us, so that we can run after God. We don't want to be a complacent Christian or church. We want to be a watchful church. So that our names can be recorded on the book of life. May you help us and strengthen our faith. And to the church in Philadelphia, you're reminding us that we should love one another. As we love one another, we can overcome all the trials. Even when the whole world is facing trial, we can be exempted from that. So in Jesus Christ's name, I release this blessing into our brothers and sisters. To the churches in Hong Kong, Lord, help us to be united together, to love one another, to keep ourselves in love, to overcome all trials. Lord, we want to walk with you like this. Help us, strengthen us, and then lastly, to the church in of the Laodiceans, you're reminding us to put God first, and the people in the land. Otherwise, we are poor. And blind and miserable and naked, we help us to pursue heavenly wealth. Help us to really live out God first, and then people and then the land, so that we can be protected and blessed by you. May you help us like this. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you all.